What is up guys? Today we are looking at how Amsterdam became a bicycle paradise. So yeah, let's see what we've got here guys today. If you're new to the channel here, we do reactions around Netherlands mostly, like different things about it. We do stuff about other countries as well, like the USA, sometimes Germany, Australia, things like that, but mainly Netherlands at the moment guys. So if you're into that guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to check out our Discord where we can have conversations. You can suggest videos for me to react to. Link will be below in the description. Check out our Patreon as well while you're doing that for exclusive content. And yeah, let's get on with it. Let's see what we got. The Netherlands is known as a cyclist's paradise. Its safety levels, one of the best in the world, are in staggering contrast with the US, where you're around 20 times more likely to be injured while riding a bike. In the Dutch capital, nearly half the working population commutes daily on over 500 kilometers of dedicated wow. cycle paths. But the city only narrowly avoided being taken over by cars. Here's how Amsterdam put the brakes on cars to give bikes a chance. I think I did a similar video around this, but this is just another perspective. So let's see. Let's see what we've got. Following the Second World War, the mobility and affordability of cars started changing people's lives. Neighbourhoods around the world were being flattened to make way for busy highways. Chicago is moving a city. New York striving to keep abreast of the ceaseless teeming traffic. Amsterdam wasn't going to be left behind. Streets, once considered public space in the Netherlands, were changing. Their new function was purely for traffic. The number of bikes in Amsterdam plummeted. Between 1960 and 1970, the number of cars in the country quadrupled, jamming the traditionally narrow wow. streets. Engineers and city planners wanted to modernize Amsterdam to make it more car friendly. They proposed ideas like filling in the famous canals with concrete, leveling historic neighborhoods and building expressways and monorails. This is what Amsterdam would have looked like in 2000 if the Das brothers had realized their futuristic vision. Unsurprisingly, there was opposition. Anarchist group Provo came up with the world's first bike and car sharing schemes they didn't take off at the time, but the sentiment to keep Amsterdam light on cars was shared. Wow, look at that, bro. That's a cool ride. That's a cool ride, bro. Like, easy access to get around to places. I like that. Dutch road fatalities peaked in 1972. Wow. In response, protest groups like Stop the Kindermord or Stop Murdering Children were organising blockades of areas with high accident rates to make their point. Then, in 1973, the oil crisis sent fuel prices skyward, prompting the Dutch government to ban motor vehicles for one day a week. The reaction one here to the week. Sunday motoring okay. ban has been mixed. The unions and the hoteliers are angry and annoyed. Car-free Sunday, wow. That's something I never heard before. But the sales of bicycles started to rise. Pressure groups jumped at the opportunity to show citizens how Amsterdam could look without cars. The government took notice and in 1978 introduced the traffic circulation plan to make Amsterdam less attractive to drivers. It called okay. for the closure of certain streets to traffic, reduction in car parking spaces and gave priority to cyclists and pedestrians. Wow, that's amazing. Amsterdam started embracing Voornef, or living streets, a concept that was already successful in reducing traffic casualties outside of the capital. The specially designed zones are landscape to slow drivers down. Without sidewalks, drivers share the space with cyclists and pedestrians and have to move at walking pace. Hmm. Wow. Making Amsterdam more bike friendly was really about making the city less friendly for cars. Now, almost a quarter of the Dutch population cycles every day, with 75% of children cycling. 75% of children 12 to 18 years old go to school with bicycles, man. Just imagine. That is insane, like honestly. In secondary school. The number of cyclists on the road also makes it safer. Research shows a correlation between higher numbers of bikes and lower casualties among cyclists. Wow. If Amsterdam's story is anything to go by, there's not only safety, but also power in numbers. Just as important as cycling lanes and car controls is getting people on bikes in the first place. Wow, bro. Honestly, that was a brilliant video. Really enjoyed that. Let me know, guys, your thoughts on this in the comments below. Hope you all enjoyed. And yeah, 
That's it for today. See you on the next one, guys. Peace out.